Hi guys, welcome back. Today we are going to have the introduction to valuation. What does it mean when we want to determine the value of an asset? Why is it important to talk about valuation? Imagine yourself being an investor. Whether you consider buying paper assets like stocks, machinery for production, or even real estate property, the principles of valuation are very much relevant. When a price is offered, how do you know whether it is a fair price? As they say, price is what you pay for, value is what you get. As such, the valuation principles are instrumental for you to have a fair deal. Just a disclaimer, I am talking about the valuation of economic assets, those you buy with the intention of earning. I am not referring to assets with aesthetic or sentimental values such as painting and jewelry. Having said that, what do we mean when we say the word value? The value of an asset is the present value of the future cash flows it is expected to generate. Again, the value of an asset is the present value of the future cash flows it is expected to generate. In order for us to illustrate, let us refer to the following sample case. If you believe that dividends will be 4 pesos forever when you buy a preferred stock, and you want to earn 8% per annum, what would you be willing to pay for the stock? Again, the value of an asset is the present value of the future cash flows it is expected to generate. As for stocks, the dividends are the future cash flows that this asset would generate. That is, 4 pesos annually in the given. We would use the required rate of return to discount it back to year 0 now. That is 8%. Then there we go. As this is a perpetuity, we simply need to divide the annual dividend 4 pesos by the required rate of return 8% giving us 50 pesos. The value of this stock is 50 pesos. Again, the value of an asset is the present value of the future cash flows it is expected to generate. What we just did is called discounted cash flow or intrinsic value method. Now, what if we do not want to do the dirty work in discounting future cash flows. Is there any other way to do it? Is there any other way to do it? What we can do is to rely on other market participants, the buyers and sellers of the stock. Let the market tell us what the value of the asset, in this case a stock, is. We would resort to relative valuation. This is a technique that gives reference to similar assets in the market. We use their prices as the basis for the valuation. Let us illustrate with the case of XYZ Corporation's stock here. To begin relative valuation, we need to have similar companies as a basis for comparison. We call them comparables. Generally speaking, comparables should belong to the same industry. If XYZ is an airline, its comparables should be the same. So say for example, we have ABC Company, DEF Incorporated, and GHI Corporation as our comparables. Say that they belong with the same industry where XYZ belongs. We would also need a way to scale the value to make them comparable. If their stock prices are 20 pesos, 9 pesos, and 33 pesos respectively, we cannot simply take their average immediately. These stocks have different variables such as book values and earnings per share. For example, DEF has a stock price of only 9 pesos, but maybe there are 100 million shares outstanding. That would give a 900 million market cap. GHI's stock price is only 33. But what if it has only 100,000 stocks outstanding? Then it's 
market capitalization is only 3.3 million, significantly lower than that of DEF. As such, we need a, we need a way to scale them to make them compatible. The way to scale them is to use a multiple, the most popular of which is the price to earnings ratio. That is the ratio of stock price to earnings per share. Say if the earnings per share of XYZ Corporation is 5 pesos, and for the compatibles, 4 pesos, 2 pesos, and 6 pesos respectively, we simply need to divide the stock prices by these values. So there we go, the PE ratios are 5 times for ABC Company, 4.5 times for DEF Incorporated, and 5.5 times for GHI Corporation. After doing this, we average these figures to arrive at the industry PE ratio, so it is around 5 times. If there are differences between XYZ Corporation and the average company in the industry, what we can do is to make adjustments by adding or subtracting from the figure 5 times. If there is none, we can use this ratio 5 times to work back on the stock value. Again, if XYZ's earnings per share is 5 pesos per share, we can say that the stock value working back using the PE ratio should be 25 pesos. Again, in relative valuation, we give reference to similar assets in the market. We use their prices as the basis for devaluation. We assume on average, the market is correct in pricing the stocks. In this course, we would include discussions of issues on valuing companies and their stocks in different stages of the cycle. Also included in this course is the valuation of derivatives. A derivative is a contract between two or more parties whose value is based on an agreed-upon underlying asset. Derivatives are helpful in hedging, that is, managing exposure to risk, a popular example of which is options. We place options on center stage and use techniques like the binomial model and the Black-Scholes-Merton model to value such type of derivatives. Enjoy the show! Thank you for watching. Comment for the future topics that you would like to request. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you like this video and hit the subscribe and notification bell to be updated for future videos.